Democracy, Indonesian style. Protest every day, like this one, against corruption. Still rampant, despite the revolution 13 years ago. Fahri Hamza was one of the students who led the protest against Suharto in 1998. Indonesia became the world's third largest democracy, and the former activist became part of it, as a member of parliament, for Indonesia's most prominent Islamic party, the Prosperous Justice Party, affiliated with Egypt's Muslim Brotherhood. The party abandoning its call for an Islamic state and Sharia law. The Islamic Brotherhood should not keep fighting the government, but it should help build the country and it should make itself electable to the people. Now the Prosperous Justice Party is a modern party, with hip-hop at the National Congress and four ministers in the government. It's one of the keys to the Indonesian success story. This ally of brotherhood in Egypt has joined the democratic process. Indonesia is proud to be an example where Islam and democracy go hand in hand. But recent religious violence shows that even after escaping dictatorship, democracy will still stay a serious work in progress that needs decisive leadership. The recent murder of three members of Ahmadiyya shocked many Indonesians who felt their country was going back to the dark days of 1998. But despite these serious setbacks, Indonesia has changed for good, says the man who led the revolt against Suharto. Yeah, of course there are still many homeworks which we have to overcome. You know? But at least we enjoy uh, freedom of the press, freedom of opinion, freedom of religion. Indonesians are watching closely the developments in the Arab world. They know exactly how it felt to fight for that one thing they never had and will now never let go. Freedom. Stab Fasen, Al Jazeera, Jakarta.